Hey there everyone and welcome back to another episode of Microtech Canada's MTCNA tutorials. Today in episode 38, we'll continue where we left off and discuss how you can find and track down unwanted traffic in router OS, stop them effectively, and what devices you can use for such a purpose in different industries. Some time ago, in episode 13, we explained the torch tool in router OS for monitoring ongoing traffic. For instance, if the trainee PC is interacting with a destination within the global internet domain, we understood that we can employ torch on the interfaces of both the trainee router and the class access point to observe this traffic. Also, in the previous session available on our website, we talked about using firewall configurations to stop a DDoS attack. However, we all know that unwanted network traffic is not always some kind of threat and they can include the millions of ads you see every single day on various websites such as speedtest.net here. Now, a few days ago, we connected a clean and brand new device to the trainee router via its wireless interface. Then, we started talking on and off about two specific topics, namely MacBooks and weight loss, whenever we were around this device. Interestingly enough, as many of you might have experienced, after a few days, the ad blocks on speedtest.net started to change when we visited the website from this specific device. Clearly, somebody's been listening, but the million dollar question is where do these ads come from? To answer this question, we simply had to start monitoring the traffic and thus ran torch on the trainee router interface to which this device was connected. By opening Winbox and referring to the IP menu and the DHCP server submenu in the Leases tab, we had one record with the IP address of 192.168.1.253 which was a trainee PC on the Ether1 to PC interface. As soon as our new device connected to the trainee router, it was given a new IP address that is 192.168.1.251 one two fifty one on the wireless interface of WLAN two to PC. To monitor the traffic, we referred to the tools menu and started torch. Here we chose the interface WLAN two to PC, set the entry timeout to ten seconds for better observation, and added the IP address of our new device that is one ninety two one sixty eight one two fifty one in the source address field. As soon as we started Torch and opened speeddesk.net, we witnessed a flood of traffic between our device and an endless number of destination addresses. Also, at the bottom of the Torch window, the counters started showing the volume of traffic and the number of packets being passed through this interface. Moreover, by sorting the results via the transmission and reception columns, we could see the destination hosts that were sending the greatest amount of traffic to our device. On a side note, you can see that some of the destination hosts were using the port 8080 while our source address was interacting with them using different source ports. Port 8080 is used for bandwidth tests. And the reason our source address was using different source ports is that we had opted for the multi-session mode on speedtest.net for a better result. So, if speedtest is using port 8080, what are all these other destinations that are running on port 443? This is where a manual investigation is required and you can use the two ports and protocol filters to sort your results for more efficiency. As mentioned before, you can either go to whois.com or use the whois command on the terminal app in a Mac to find out detailed information about any given IP address. We did exactly that, and using the whois command on the terminal app, we came across a number of companies, the most interesting of which were Amazon, Google, and Apple, among others. Now, to sort and record the information we have found for later use, we can refer to the IP menu and the firewall submenu, and from the address lists tab, we can list and group our addresses of choice. To do so, we will first input a name for our list. Here, we used ads. Then, we can start adding various IP addresses under this list. Since companies use thousands of IP addresses to target their customers, 
we suggest adding 0 slash 24 at the end of all these addresses so that you can include that entire network and save yourself a great deal of trouble. After hitting apply, your list will be created and by using the copy button, you can add other addresses more easily. By repeating this process, we compile a list of addresses that we found. For easier management, you can also use the comment button and add titles or notes to the addresses as you wish. Since the traffic in question is coming from outside the trainee router and is passed on to our new device, the traffic will be regarded as forwarded traffic. We discussed in previous sessions that pre-routing is the first stage that a forwarded traffic hits when it enters our router. And within the pre-routing stage, the very first place where we can stop incoming traffic is raw pre-routing. Therefore, to monitor ongoing activities, we refer to the raw tab, created a raw rule with the pre-routing chain, the ads address list as our source address list, and the pass through action with the log option and relevant log prefix for inbound traffic from the ads. Next, we copied that raw rule with the slight difference of putting the ads address list in the destination address list and a suitable prefix for the outbound traffic to ads in order to see the log records of this traffic in both ways. As soon as our log filters are in place, we can see the traffic and packet counters for each rule. Also, by referring to the log window, will witness thousands of log records for inbound and outbound traffic in a matter of seconds. Moreover, since we used a small router with a limited processing ability for more tangible results, you can see that our CPU usage skyrockets and almost half of our CPU capacity is taken for this traffic. Now, to stop this volume of unwanted traffic, we can simply refer back to the raw tab and change the action of the two raw rules from pass through to drop. We'll also stop logging the traffic as it is no longer necessary. As soon as this change is made, you can see that CPU usage drops notably. Ongoing traffic is brought down to almost a complete halt. And accordingly, the counters on our raw rules no longer continue their increasing trend. What's more interesting, however, is that once we run speedtest.net again on our device, the ads are now completely gone. And more importantly, we are witnessing a collective download and upload increase of almost 2 megabits per second on a DSL connection a change that will be much more noteworthy if you run the same test on faster connections with greater bandwidth. If you're wondering what good this knowledge does, for one thing, you will be able to reduce damaging parameters such as excess traffic, repair costs, possible cyber threats, and the possibility of having an online security breach due to a third party's failed or outdated security. On the other hand, you'll experience faster connections, a higher quality work environment, greater work efficiency, and productivity, to name a few. And with regard to the equipment for conducting such a network project, Microtik has a range of offers, starting with the map and the map light, suitable for one to five simultaneously active users for connections up to 10 megabits. These devices can be used for network simulations at educational centers, home labs, or training facilities. The same goes for HAP and HAPLite, though they can handle connections up to 25 megabits per second. Next, we have HEX and HEX-S. They can handle the same number of users, but offer you connections up to 700 megabits per second and can be used as customer premise equipment by small to medium businesses, ISPs or wireless ISPs, or used for home or small office networks, system integrations, and VoIP services. If you're looking for a higher tier device in similar industries, you can go for the HAP AC Square or the HAP AC Cube. They can accommodate 30 to 35 users with speeds of 300 megabits for wireless and 700 megabits to 1 gigabit for wired connections. At the next level, we have the new generation HAP-AX-Square and HAP-AX-Cube, 
superb access points with Wi-Fi 6 and wireless speeds of up to 1.2 gigabit per second. And then there is the RB5009 and its PoE version with 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit interfaces. Mind you, the RB5009 and above can be something of an overkill for home network usage, but are perfect for businesses, service providers, integration, VoIP, and managed IT services. At the top tier at this time, we first have the CCR2004 and its quieter version with passive cooling that can handle up to 200 users for various types of service providers, including hosting and co-location services. And finally, for the greatest performance in the heaviest of scenarios, you can opt for the CCR2116 or the flagship CCR2216. The former gives you 10 gigabit interfaces with an amazing CPU power, while the latter will usher in the world of 100 gigabit connectivity to your operations. Well, this is it. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Tune in for the next tutorial where we'll discuss default firewall configurations of Microtech hardware and talk about stateful and stateless connections. As always, let us know your questions in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked our content.